Camper family. Welcome back to It's Poppin'. So in this video, we're gonna do another pop-up camper basics video. We are gonna show you how we maintain our pop-up camper battery. And for this video, we are specifically talking about a single 12-volt lead-acid battery. Okay, so what do you all need to maintain this battery so it doesn't turn into like a 20 or 30 pound paperweight? Uh, first things first, get some sort of battery charger slash maintainer. This one is a Black & Decker. It's super simple and basic um, and it's a 1.2 amp um, battery charger. So you can go, you know, relatively inexpensive, like this one's about $25 all the way on up and get super crazy expensive and essentially you're just getting more features and maybe you're gonna be pushing out more amps so it charges that battery a little faster, a little smarter, et cetera, et cetera. But we're talking, you know, perhaps an $80 lead acid battery here. So I went with, you know, the more economical option of a $25 controller. And we've had this for a couple of years. So far, so good. We haven't had any problems with it. So the second thing you'll need is some distilled water. So not bottled water, not tap water, distilled water. And what you're gonna do with this is, and we'll show you of course coming up here, but you're gonna pop those plates off the top of your battery and make sure the metal plates within your battery are covered. And then also make sure they're relatively level, right? So that is what this for. And essentially by covering those plates with water, as the battery acid kind of evaporates off, um, this will ensure that um, you, know, you don't get any premature um, sulfation within your battery. Okay, so first things first, we're going to uh, don our safety equipment. Um, specifically, highly recommend uh, some protective glasses and some protective gloves. I'm gonna flip our battery off. This is a just a kind of a kill switch for the battery, which of course will uh, disconnect it from the pop-up camper. And we do have a video on this install if you wanna check that out. But nevertheless, let's pop this top off. And because it does have that disconnect switch, I'm gonna have to kind of hold this up while I disconnect everything here. But, as soon as we get everything off here, we'll be able to check the fluid levels uh, in our battery. Now I like to use a simple screwdriver to just pop these plates off. So as you guys may or may not be able to see, this first cell right here is actually a little bit low. The other ones look really nice and even and uh, I can't see any of the metal plates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna top this one off just so it's e even with the um, remaining five cells. Just a little more. So now that that's topped off nice and level, and once again, those metal plates are completely covered up, I'm just gonna throw these back on, make sure I'm not splashing battery acid all over the place, and that's all done. So with regard to making sure that those are all level, I've read that you're supposed to do it or check it at least once a month. Seems a little extreme to me. Uh, I'm probably <laughs> in like the once a year club, but do it however often you feel comfortable doing it or however often you can. So now moving on, we of course have our battery charger and maintainer. So let me show you how we set this up. Um, that way it's really quick and easy to plug in once we uh, park or pop up in the garage in between camping trips or even when it's in storage over the colder parts of the winter. Uh, it makes it really simple and easy to keep our battery charged up. So the nice thing about what this Black & Decker came with is it came with, with some of these terminal rings and these are handy in the sense that we have a nice quick disconnect or connect however you want that we can just simply leave permanently attached to the, bat uh, to the battery terminals. So what I'm saying is that if you're shopping for a battery maintainer or charger Something with a nice quick disconnect as opposed to the alligator clips 
is really nice. So now as you can see, we have this nice quick disconnect. So if we're traveling or we're at the campsite, we can just pop that cover back on nice and simple. But once we get back to the garage or to the storage site, we can take our uh, quick connect and make sure there's no dog hair in it. <laughs> Plug it back in there and then we'll just take our charger and plug it in one of the key things with this black and decker is it does do six volt as well so make sure it's on the 12 volt side but it's as simple as that depending on of course the condition of the battery it'll go into three different modes off the top of my head of course you kind of have your bulk charge oh shoot i don't know if it's like float and then trickle or something like that but it'll do the appropriate charge for the level of charge it finds your battery in, and of course it won't overcharge it. So one of the benefits of having the battery disconnect switches installed is that you can, of course, disconnect your battery. So I like to leave this while we're just on the charge controller in the off position. That way there's nothing in the camper that you might consider a parasitic load, of course, if you're not using it. So for example, the propane alarm that's consistently drawn a few watts, so it will drain down your battery. So if you have the disconnect on, of course, that's not gonna be drawn any power, and then your battery charger and maintainer can do its job without having to keep up with any parasitic draws. Okay, so you might be wondering, why do I need to go out and buy a $25 charger slash maintainer if the converter inside my pop-up does the exact same thing? and you are absolutely right. The converter in the pop-up does charge your ba uh, battery. And I think it, as long as you know you have a relatively newer pop-up. Some of the older converters, maybe not, but specific models and years, I have no idea what's what. Um, but nevertheless, for example, in our 2008 Jayco here, the converter does charge the battery. But here's the downsides to using that as a battery charger and maintainer. First and foremost, of course, you have that really big, bulky 30 amp cord that you have to run to an outlet. Uh, second, you have to be somewhere that has an outlet, right? So if you're in a garage, that's no problem, but perhaps if you're in offsite storage, you might not have access to that. And third, and I, I, this is just how I feel, so maybe it's just uh, not true at all, but if you're using the converter in your pop-up to charge your battery, that's probably just inducing more wear and tear on that converter, which of course you might have to change that out earlier or sooner than you otherwise would have. And those run anywhere from you know $120 to $150, whereas the charger that we have here is 25, so significantly cheaper. So that way, um, you know, if that breaks, it's a lot better than your uh, converter in your pop-up. So there's a few myths out there regarding batteries. And with modern batteries like we're all probably buying these days. There's really no need to keep them up and off of concrete. I think there was a, um, a point in history where you needed to keep batteries up and off concrete, otherwise you risk them, uh, you know, kind of drawing down prematurely. But with batteries like this, you can leave them on concrete, you can put them on wood if that makes you feel better, you can put them wherever you want really, as long as of course it's in a safe, dry, and relatively uh, temperature controlled area. We keep our battery in our garage all year long, but if you're, for example, keeping your pop-up at a storage uh, site, it definitely wouldn't hurt, of course, to bring your battery with you if you're going into long-term storage, put it in the garage, put it in the basement, keep it on a trickle charger, um, just like we have here. Now, if you can't keep it consistently on a trickle charger, I think the recommendation is charge it up about once every 30 days or of course once every month. So just a few uh, closing thoughts for you guys with regards to battery maintenance. Otherwise it's super simple. Keep it charged up with a, a controller and then make sure it's uh, topped off with distilled water and you're good to go. That way uh, you're not buying an 80, 100, $150 battery every year when you're trying to go camping come camping season. So hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, hopefully we see you in the next one. If not, hopefully we see you out there camping.